This is Matt for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fight Store. Delight to be joined once again by Michaela Mayer. Michaela, first off, how's things? How are you? Um, I'm doing good. Yeah, everything is starting to, you know, sort of settle and get back to normal. And I'm, I'm excited because I'm back in camp and I have an opponent and a fight date and uh, just motivated and ready to go. I know you won't be able to probably reveal who you're fighting, where you're fighting, but last time we spoke, I think you revealed to everyone you were supposed to be on the Josh Taylor card in Scotland and then that fell through. What have you been doing in the meantime? Have you just been ticking over in the gym, keeping going, sort of in preparation for a fight? Yeah, I was supposed to fight on the Josh Taylor card. Um, so I had already come out to Michigan where Coach Al lives. Yeah. And I already started camp. And we always do our first half of camp here. It's just what we've always done. And then we moved to Colorado, but um, I just ended up staying here a little bit longer than I normally would have. So a couple extra weeks here, then I'm going to head home and break um, next week, take care of some stuff. And then Coach Al will sort of meet me back out in Colorado so we can finish up. How sort of frustrating was it when you were so close to sort of having something announced and then for it to fall through sort of last minute? Because I know, I know you're eager to get back on it. Well, I was actually just really excited to fight, you know, mm -hmm. with Josh Taylor on that card because I know it was a rematch that a lot of people were looking forward to, uh, Josh Taylor versus Catterall. And I thought it would just sort of fit, it sort of fit me being on that card as well, you know, coming off the the fight, I, the close decision I had with Baumgartner and what, you know, what I, what I thought was a bad decision. And um, it just sort of made sense for us to come together and set up sort of like a redemption fight. Um Plus, was in Scotland, where Josh Taylor was from. I thought it'd be just be really great, but I hope he gets better soon. And I'm excited about the next car that they're putting me on. I think it'll be just as big, and I'm excited to announce that sometime next week, hopefully. Hopefully, look before we um before we come on to the action that we saw at the weekend. Talk to me about your tweet last night. Um, it did make me smile. Um, Troy. On the physical, oh. um, <laughs> okay. So I, I had it on in the background because I, so I don't know what how we got onto watching this, and then I was looking through and I was just like, "Holy shit!" Like, yeah, yeah. I had just gotten home from New York. I was out in New York this weekend, obviously. Um, I had just gotten home. I popped on Netflix just on the couch before I had to go to the gym, and random show put it on and the first episode they're going through all these athletes from Korea and a boxer I see a boxer come on the screen I'm like no way and I'm like either this is why she couldn't fight or this is how she got injured because <laughs> you know she said she was injured she couldn't take on the bomb gunner fight um it looks like she lost right off the bat so I don't think that's how she got injured her injury is still probably fake like I presumed in the first place but uh yeah that was pretty funny to see her on there uh her that should not be her focus right now you know it makes sense she's been dodging fights left and right uh she needs to be stripped dodging fights going from dodging fights to you know turning down undisputed to suddenly i'm injured blah 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 just strip her and get her out of the picture she can continue to do shows in korea is she currently a, a champion in recess is that what yeah. the is? She's the champ in recess, so they just randomly gave Baumgartner May College, who's not even a champion, who's not even number one contender in the division. Felicia was a real G, like she says she is. She would have challenged Delphine Pursun for Undisputed, who is much more worthy of that of that fight and that opportunity. But, you know, she went with the easier option, not surprised. Um, I expected her to run through May College. But now she uh, is supposed to face Choi. Choi is supposed to get a shot at the winner of that fight. And we'll see. We'll see what she does. Let's sort of move from the TV program, though, to what we saw at the weekend. Obviously, you've shared a ring with Von Gardner. So you know as well as anyone how she fights. But what did you make of her performance? Was there anything different you saw in comparison to what she did in there with you? What did you make of, what did you make of her and, and the victory? Um... You know, she, she 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 obviously looked good. She looked like she was strong and powerful, which she always, you know, she's always had that strength. We've always known that she was a big puncher. Um, someone like Elham didn't have the best strategy going into that fight, standing right in front of her right hand. But 
I mean, she almost finished. Baumgartner almost finished McCollett in that second round. Yeah. And when she came out for the third, she had completely gassed out. I mean, she had punched herself out by round three in two minute rounds. So I don't know what she's been doing since my fight. Um, maybe, you know, her head got a little big. She's in there just continuing to hit those weights and getting all hyped on that. But she has a conditioning problem. She has no stamina. And I, I don't know. I don't know what she's doing. I don't know what she's doing where she couldn't last three rounds. In the build-up to this fight and the talk about her becoming undisputed, which I suppose you can't really begrudge her if there's a belt on offer, the, the, there was sort of the talk of your rematch was, it was more muted, I would say, from her side. I think that's a fair assessment. But now that's out the way and she has the belt. Um, she seems more open to the rematch. And at the end of a fight, she said she she thinks she'd knock you out. So You want to know why she, this girl is suddenly open to the rematch? Um, she got she got her purse. She got her purse to go undisputed, and said, "This is what I'm getting to go undisputed." But 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 I got this for Michaela, yeah, because you fought Michaela. So if you want to continue on thinking that you know you're the star of the show and that you can go and you make all this money and that you put all this work in, that you're the champion, you don't need anybody else. You know that's not the case. Rivalries in boxing are really important, and you know we proved that and. She made the biggest payday of her life. And when Eddie came to her and gave her the purse, she said, Oh shit, let me start uh let me start rethinking that rematch with Michaela. It's exactly what ha happened. Um, and you know, people won't shut up about it. Everyone's at every her whole her whole undisputed night became about me. Everyone's asking about me, everyone's asking about the rematch. And that obviously pisses her the hell off, but you know, it's just it's what the fans want to see. And it's the next best business move for her. So we always known that she wasn't that smart. So of course she's not going to want to capitalize on that right away, but it's definitely the best move for her. Chris Mannix said it at the end of the fight. Um, that was the most lucrative fight for her was the rematch with me. So she's, yeah. she's learning. She's learning. I suppose for her now though, now she's got that belt and she's got the tag of undisputed. Really, you are the next sort of, option because like she mentioned I think she mentioned Katie Taylor in post fight but obviously Taylor and Serrano is happening so you're mm -hmm. you're the obviously the money fight the rematch do you think this fight is going to be difficult to make or not do you think she she may dig her heels in I'm not speaking for her but do you think she will be like look you know I came to another show last time and you know this that and the other you've got to now you know do things a bit more on my terms do you think you're going to have any issues with this Okay, well, her and, her and Eddie need to have a conversation because she's saying they're on my terms. And Eddie is coming out with quotes from this weekend saying, oh, yeah, Top Rank needs to make an offer that we can't refuse. And needs, the number needs to be big. We made the first offer because we were the champions. Now you're the champion. You're the undisputed champion. Since when does the challenger make the offer? That means he's literally willing to send his unified, undisputed world champion back over to Top Rank on ESPN. Why? Only thing I can think of is that he can't afford the rematch. Never. We um we hope to see that fight. And obviously, you've been banging the drum for it ever since it happened in the in the rematch. Then specifically, because you think you won the first fight. Don't think many will dispute that. Obviously, I know people as well. Um, thought Alicia won, which yeah, fine. Do you look at that rematch now and go, I have to do something different in order for this to be? clearer than it was have you looked back at that and go right i know what i will do in this rematch now so that there is no argument about it um obviously there's there's a few things that i would do to make it even more convincing i mean i always said that if i would have known the judges were seeing the fight in her favor i would have i would have stepped on the gas a little more and and pressed her because we all know that I can, I can press an opponent. I'm a, I'm a pressure fighter. We've all seen me do that. So we know we, I can do it. Mm -hmm. I, I thought the game plan that coach Allen and I had was really smart. And when you see her go up against someone like me, our fight, and then see her fight someone like Elham McCollid, where, you know, she almost dropped her three times. It shows that my game plan with her was extremely smart and that my IQ is very high and that I, I went in there with a, a good strategy for someone who just likes to punch themselves out and throw big bombs. Mm -hmm. um, but in hindsight, 
knowing that the judges weren't seeing it that way, then I definitely would have pressed her and I know that I can. And so I think that's what makes this rematch even will make this rematch even more exciting is we've both already been in there with each other. That sort of element of surprise is gone and yeah. you're going to definitely see a different fight. You know, fingers crossed this gets this gets over the line. Look, um, in terms of boxing this weekend, it was another great weekend for, I keep saying female boxing, but for boxing again. But um, the females are really putting the shows on. There's a lot of undisputed champions mm -hmm. as well at the minute. The best we're seeing, the best fight, the best. Is this the sort of thing that needs to cross over now into you know, the men's side of the game? We see a lot of fights where it's like gets close and a lot of the times they're falling through. Are the women sort of leading the way, in your opinion, in terms of these big fights? Um. Oh yeah. Sorry, my someone just called me. Um. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one big fight after another. We're putting them on and we're making them happen. And, um, you know, I understand that there's a difference between men and women's boxing right now, but yeah. uh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more male boxers, but, um, I don't think that plays a role into this. I think that the women just are hungrier and we have more to prove and um, we don't have the privilege of sitting back and collecting one big check and just riding off of that for a year, two, three years and, and picking our fights and holding on to our belt. Like we, we just don't like we're in that developmental stage of women's boxing where if we don't put on the big fights and we don't do everything we can to prove that we belong on this big stage, then we're never going to get to that next level. So um hopefully we're setting the tone and hopefully yeah. we're making these guys sort of uh hungry to do the same but i think money plays a big role into this everyone wants to keep that big payday and hold on to yeah. that hold on to those belts so i think it has to do with the the promoters and just the whole energy of boxing and the whole the whole community the whole you know everything about boxing and basically getting rid of that narrative that be staying in the feet is the most important thing yeah and it's gonna take it's gonna take fights like this it's gonna take fighters like me who who ended up losing that o mm. and coming back and showing look i'm still gonna make big fights i'm still gonna come back i'm still gonna get world title shots i'm gonna get the belts back yeah. um other girls are doing it too you know terry harper came back she's a world champion um tasha jonas came back she's a world champion so we're just same with serrano sister like we're just continuing to do that and i think that's what's going to set a really good example and show people like hey okay yeah it may suck to lose your own in the beginning but it's not the end how proud are you to be part of this current crop of women because you you guys are almost like you know yourself alicia and um, also katie taylor who started it clarissa all these great fighters you're sort of part of that current crop who are now opening doors for the theme the next sort of female champions that will come through. Do you think in, say, I don't know, four or five years' time, we, we're maybe having a different conversation and women's boxing will have progressed a little bit more as well? Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. It's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Like, all the work that we're doing now, um, you know, people asked this question years ago, like, don't you think women deserve more respect, deserve more respect? I'm like, yeah, but I understand the evolutionary process of this all. We weren't even allowed to compete in the Olympics until 2012, you know? So we suddenly had that, you know, we were able to compete at the highest level. We have the experience now. We have that deep talent pool and it's going to continue to grow. I mean, you look at gyms now, there's, there's a handful of young women coming up and your girls are starting at a younger and younger age. The girls now, a lot of us now, we didn't start when we were five, six, and seven, like a lot of the men. Some yeah. of us did, but not a majority of us, we didn't have the opportunity at, at a young age. And so coaches weren't coming and taking us under their wing and saying, I can build you into a world champion because there was just no incentive for them. But that's slowly changing over time. And there is incentive now to take a young female and build her and turn her into a world champion. Um, so yeah, it's definitely going to continue to grow. There's no doubt about it. Before we go, I've got to get your opinion. Katie Taylor's fighting Serrano again. I've got to get your opinion. I know you do a lot of the commentary now and you're pundit mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So what's your honest opinion on the rematch and how it goes? Um, So, you know, I rewatched that last fight. When I was sitting ringside, I thought I had Serrano winning. I was sort of like stuck in the corner and I... It's yeah. a horrible... I think the judges are sit in a horrible position. They should be bird's eye view, right? Because you always see the fight better from like a mm -hmm. camera angle on TV because you have a bird's eye view. It's horrible from right down there. So when I rewatched the fight, I did have Katie win. I felt like Serrano's punches were just this short and Katie was keeping that little space. And so I definitely had 
Katie winning the winning that fight. And but you know, Serrano did have her moments. I just think that Katie Taylor is so experienced and has gone up against so many different styles that she knows how to adjust. She knows how to adjust and make those changes and and come out better. And so I don't know if Serrano has the ability to adjust as well as Katie. Um, you know, I, I know Serrano has her, her favorite punches and she has her style and I see her do, she does what she does really well, yeah. but I just feel like Katie can do more. And I think that I wouldn't put my money against Katie in the three match. I just think she's going to, that experience is going to come through and she's going to be able to adjust and, um, come out with the decision again. I, I know you've, I think you've hinted at the, in the past about obviously moving up and down in weight and things like that. And you're willing to do it. And, for the right fight, I would say you'll still be wanting to fight the likes of uh, Katie Taylor and stuff in the future, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I've always said that I want to fight Katie Taylor. Um, I'm at 135 now. I'm yeah. going to start making a name for myself here. Um, there's nothing else left for me at 130 other than a rematch with Baumgartner. But other than that, I've, I've fought 18 fights there. So mm -hmm. I'm ready to go for 135. Um and earn a fight against Katie Taylor and then eventually 140. I've always said I've had the I had the, the height and the skill yeah. to yeah. go up to multiple divisions and and that's in a lot of different places. I have I have the ability to do that. So are you looking forward to moving up in weight? I look at you, you 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 you're very you're quite tall. I look at the weight and think, you know, does it does it affect you getting the last few pounds off at all? Or do you are you looking forward to like coming in maybe feeling a bit more comfortable like you don't have to cut as much the only thing about me cutting so much weight i have perfecting athletes so like literally i am not missing a meal i'm drinking a half a gallon of water the day before weigh in i do everything really smart but it's it is it does require a lot of discipline you know my camps at the start early i have to start with the dieting down you know i'm training on a calorie deficit so i may not feel as fully energized as everyone else is through camp but I always go into that fight going, feeling really, really strong. Like I've never depleted. I've never dehydrated. Um, but at that point, like naturally at that point, I am definitely cutting muscle. You know, I'm getting down so tiny that I'm cutting muscle. And so I am definitely excited to see how I feel fuller and a more natural weight. And I really think that's going to be at 140, to be honest. Like yeah. I... 135 is going to be a lot cooler. We'll see how I how I feel there, but um, I got the size to go to 140, 147. Wow, your legacy could be if everything goes to plan, then that you're a multi weight like world champion like throughout. How is that sort of the end goal for you? Like that when you I know you've got years left maybe in the sport, but when you look back and go, wow, I've, you know, world champion at this weight, world champion at that weight, is that yeah. what your legacy to be? Yeah, always. I've always wanted that. I always thought it. I wanted to go undisputed at 130, move up to 135, take Katie Taylor's bells, move up to 140. Um, and all those divisions are unified now. And so it just sort of be like a one stop shop, um, you know, not like having to go collect every single belt like it sort of was for me in the beginning. But um, yeah, absolutely. And at least get to the point where I'm challenging those champions. Yeah, uh, that's the most important thing to me. You know, going undisputed is great. And just having that title is great. But really, what makes going undisputed so awesome is that and so rewarding is that you've challenged yourself against the best against the other top girls in the sport and that's really what to me is most fulfilling so that's what i want to make sure that i continue to do absolutely well look, michaela it's always a pleasure catching up with you we look forward to seeing you back in the ring soon you've got a message for your fans um obviously over there in the states and for those here in the uk Yes, um, for those in the UK, I am not discouraged about coming back to the UK. I really, really had a great experience there overall, you know, outside of that that last moment. But um, I love the supporters there. You guys are awesome. And I really, really hope to get back there soon, um, hopefully sooner than later. But stay tuned. I will be announcing my fight very shortly. I'm just waiting for the go ahead. And uh yeah, we're on the road back to becoming a world champion. So I appreciate all the followers who have stuck by my side. Well, look, Miguel, I appreciate your time. Thanks for talking to Boxing Social. Um, we'll catch up maybe fight week um, when your fight's announced. 
All right. Right on. Thank you.